the mountain, the mountain of the people of Maine. So welcome. I'm Connie Baxter Marlowe, and this is my photography. And I'm very honored to be able to have this exhibit here and have this program here tonight. And it's all because of Barbara Bentley, the president of Friends of Baxter, who decided to honor Governor Baxter tomorrow uh, for his wilderness legacy, the 50th anniversary of his wilderness legacy. And I took that as an opportunity to roll out my Katahdin exhibit and Henry David Thoreau and the Wabanaki Indians and all the work that I've been doing, piecing together a, a better way for humanity that I've, I was inspired by my ancestors, James Finney and Percival and my dad, Jack, to seek a better way for humanity. And I've been spending a couple of decades sharing my discoveries. And, and if you really look closely at this exhibit, you'll see some ideas that Thoreau and the Indians and Percival and, and James Finney um, modeled in their life and in their understanding of the nature of things. I mean, the generosity that, that, that our family has exhibited just showed me that there is another way besides being, being well, sort of the hoarding way of doing things. <laughs> and uh, in the native way, the, the giveaway is, uh, is essential to, to their way of life. So um, you can, um, you'll discover these ideas if you spend some time with this exhibit. I want to introduce Earl Shettleworth, who will be speaking on the Baxters at Bowdoin, uh, their leadership legacy, basically. And um, Earl has an deg honorary degree from Bowdoin. So he was, a, he was an ideal person to ask if he would put this Baxter thing together. My dad had always told me there's been a Baxter on the, on the board of overseers since the inception of Bowdoin. And uh, so I just wanted to have it all pulled together while my dad was um, still with us. And um, he's 92, and he's, he's here tonight. Mm -hmm. And so Earl is the Maine State Historian, and we're honored to have you here, Earl. Thank you very much for your work. And we'll also have a performance by Sarah Pletz, who will be doing a biographical sketch of Percival as a tribute to Percival. And you'll, you'll be hearing more about his life uh, and work than just the fact that he gave a mountain and 200,000 acres to the people of Maine. This man was extraordinary, what he did in his life and in his work and in, his, in office, uh, as well as his, his father, James Finney Baxter, my great-great-grandfather. Um, so uh, She's Sarah, too much. pardon? She's talking too much. <laughs> I'm introducing others, Dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, meanwhile, Sarah uh, is an international dance theater performer and filmmaker, and her um, and so the other performer will be Laura Campbell who is a singer-songwriter, and she's been performing in Maine for 35 years. So um, that'll be the little program tonight. And we are honored to have Barry Mills, the president of Bowdoin, here with us tonight, who would like to say a few words, and then we'll get on with it. Well, thank you all. Uh, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Congratulations on uh, this wonderful exhibit. And uh, Jack, it's great to see you and all of the Baxter family here. Baxter family obviously has a deep connection to Bowdoin, which Earl will speak about. Um, Earl, it does have an honorary degree from Bowdoin. He has a degree from another institution, <laughs> too. We're proud of that. Um, but we are happy to call Earl a one of our own. Um, it's um, important um, in many ways, uh, the connection between Bowdoin and the Baxter family and Baxter State Park and Mount Katahdin. The connection is deep and rich and important. So I just read it, I think, about 485, 490 new students who have come to Bowdoin as first year students. Tomorrow, a prox probably close to 75 of those students will get up very early in the morning, get on a bus, and go to the park to climb Mount Katahdin and to spend three or four days on Mount Katahdin climbing. It's become part of our tradition 
for students to go to Mount Katahdin in their first few days in May uh, to truly get to know Maine and understand what it's about. And uh, Karen and I um, have a somewhat personal connection to uh, Mount Katahdin. When I came to Maine, um, and as president of both, people said to me, you have to climb Mount Katahdin. <laughs> and we're not really outdoors people. <laughs> uh, but he said, let's do it. So with the head of our outing club, and Scott Mickeljohn, and for those of you who know him, he's a really big guy. So one of his steps is five and one. Um, we climbed Mount Katahdin, um, stayed overnight at the park. Um, we drove in, and there were moose, and it was just gloriously beautiful. And the next morning, we got up very early, and we climbed the mountain and climbed down. And I couldn't walk for another week. <laughs> but um, it is one of my most memorable experiences uh, of being in Maine. And so the legacy that the Baxter family has given to the state of Maine, the legacy that the Baxter family has to this college, is important. And the tradition of public good, the sense of the common good, which is college is fundamentally about, um, is um, embodied in this family. And so, from a very grateful heart, thank you so much for what you've done for both. And even more importantly, what you've done for the state of Maine and for everyone who really cares about the environment and nature. It's really very, very impressive. And so, thank you very much for being here. Sadly, I have a gazillion events that I have to go to tonight um, at the college. But, Earl, I look forward to reading the transcript of your talk. I'll email it to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, I wish you all very well. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. And I also want to mention that tonight, Earl, uh, Earl Howard Whitcomb is here, who wrote Baxter, uh, Governor Baxter's Magnificent Obsession. So he's very knowledgeable about the park and the, the coming, how the park was envisioned and put together. So. Um, he and my, my dad, Jack, is going to say a few words about uh, Percy's initial gift of the, uh, the trust fund, a, a fun story that, that my dad was involved in. So that'll be after um, Sarah and Laura and Earl first. <laughs> mentioned, uh, although uh, I did go to that other college in Waterville, uh, I'm also a member of the class of 2008 uh, of Bowdoin, and that makes me feel very youthful, actually, to be part of the class of 2008, and I, I, I really treasure that honor greatly. Um, I also had the privilege, growing up in Portland, uh, because I went to Baxter School of meeting Governor Baxter when I was very young and then having an opportunity during the 1960s to meet and talk with him several times uh, in his office or at his home. Tonight, Connie has asked me to give a brief overview of the extraordinary legacy of the Baxter family here at Bowdoin. And we've done a count and there are at least uh, 17 members of the family who have gone to Bowdoin. Uh, and actually, in talking with a couple family members uh, in the reception earlier, uh, I think we've, we're probably leaving out some of the really younger members, but, but in any case, that can be an addendum. We start, although chronologically, not precisely, with James Finney Baxter, 1831 to 1921. And the reason we start with him is that he didn't actually attend Bowdoin, but he received a master's degree, an honorary master's degree in 1881, and an honorary doctorate in 1904. In 1861, James Baxter established the Portland Packing Company with William G. Davis, which formed the basis for the family fortune. Financial independence allowed Baxter to become a noted scholar of Maine history, president of the Maine Historical Society for 30 years, and six-term mayor of Portland. As mayor, he promoted the improved park system and the construction of the boulevard around Back Cove, which bears his name. Baxter donated library buildings to Portland and Gorham and served as a Bowdoin overseer from 1894 till his death in 1921. His vision extended beyond Maine. He served as president of the New England Historic Genealogical Society 
and left money in Boston uh, to build a New England pantheon. And that still has yet to materialize. I always had the feeling that Mayor Curley might have gotten that money somewhere along the way. But in any case, um, we need to look into that. Um, the first of the four James P. Baxter sons to graduate from the school was Hartley Cone Baxter, 1857 to 1939, class of 1878. So he actually preceded his father uh, by uh, four years in uh, his father getting the honorary degree. Hartley Baxter was the first son of James D. Baxter to attend Bowdoin, graduating Phi Beta Kappa. He worked for his father's packing firm from 1878 to 1887, and then established his own company in Brunswick in 1888 with brother James P. Baxter, Jr., and later brother Rupert, where they managed together for more than 50 years. An avid yachtsman and automobile enthusiast, Hartley held the first driver's license issued in the state of Maine. In 1901, he built Baxter House at 10 College Street in Brunswick, an elegant colonial revival-style residence and a virtual twin to the Deke Fraternity House at 4 College Street built the same year. Baxter House has been owned by Bowdoin since, 18, since 1971 and is now a student residence. Next son, Clinton Lewis Baxter, 1859 to 1931, class of 1881. Clinton Baxter was the second son of James Baxter to attend Bowdoin. From graduation until his death, he worked for his father's business, the Portland Packing Company. He served as a Bowdoin overseer from 1917 to 1931. Rupert Henry Baxter, 1871 to 1960, class of 1894. Rupert Baxter was the third of James Baxter's son to attend the college. While at the college, he participated in the 1893 expedition to Labrador and wrote reports of his trip, which were published in the Portland newspapers. Upon graduation, Rupert Baxter joined the Brunswick canning firm of H.C. Baxter and Brother. He was also involved in textile manufacturing, real estate, and banking. His service in the Maine Senate from 1917 to 23, and Governor's Council 1923 to 1925, overlapped with the governorship of his brother. Now we come to Percival, the fourth and final son to attend the college, class of 1898. Percival also graduated Phi Beta Kappa. And I might also say, I haven't included in this, but just as a kind of general comment, uh, they all belong to the Deke fraternity. Uh, while at college, he edited the Bowdoin Orient, founded the Bowdoin Quill, played varsity football, and managed the baseball team. His dog, Deke, uh, lived with him in the dormitory and accompanied him to the classes. This, of course, foreshadows Gary uh, living in the Blaine House and working with him uh, in the State House. Uh, after graduation from Harvard Law School in 1901, Percival Baxter man managed his father's real estate interests in Portland. Beginning in 1905, he served three terms in the main House and two terms in the main Senate. He was Senate president in January of 1921 when very unexpectedly, Frederick Parkhurst, who had only been sworn in as governor a few weeks before, died. And so he became governor of Maine. Uh, he then was elected governor uh, for a second full term in 1922 on his own right. <laughs> After failing to secure the US Senate nomination in 1926, he turned his attention to his life's work of assembling the more than 200,000 acres that comprise Baxter State Park and include Mount Katahdin. His creation of the park is often cited as a major achievement in American land conservation, as he stipulated that it would remain forever wild. He also donated Mackworth Island to the state for Baxter School for the Deaf and Baxter's Woods in the city of Portland. We now move to the grandson of uh, James P. Baxter, James Finney Baxter III, 1893 to 1975, 
who was an honorary degree recipient in 1944. James Finney Baxter III was the grandson and the son of uh, J.P. Baxter, Jr. A 1914 graduate of Williams, Baxter taught history at Harvard from 1925 until becoming president of Williams in 1937. He successfully combined the roles of historian, educator, and governmental leader. He was the official historian for the Manhattan Project, and his book, Scientists Against Time, won the Pulitzer Prize for History in 1947. This, I'm sure, would have greatly pleased uh, James P. I, uh, who was a great historian in his own right. He continued to teach while administering Williams. He also served as advisor to Presidents Roosevelt, Truman, and Eisenhower, serving on a committee which Eisenhower created for the long-term strategic formation of American defense policy and strategy. John Lincoln Baxter, Jr., senior rather, 1896 to 1984. Class of 1916, honorary master's 1960, honorary doctorate 1970. A son of Hartley C. Baxter, John L. Baxter graduated Phi Beta Kappa in 1916, served as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army in World War I. He joined the canning firm of H.C. Baxter and Brothers in 1919 and was president of the Snowflake Canning from 1939 to 68. During World War II, he performed vital national service as a dollar a year man overseeing the processing of food for the armed services. Baxter served Bowdoin in many capacities, including overseer and trustee. Through his mother, Mary Lincoln Baxter, he and his descendants are related to several prominent figures in the college's history, including three early overseers, John Dunlap, Dr. Isaac Lincoln, and Samuel Pheasanton. It's a fascinating uh, branch off to the side of, of the, the history of the family going back, way back into main history. John Lincoln Baxter, Jr., born 1920, and we're very happy to have you with us today. Did he talk about the Lincoln? Yes. yes. <laughs> Class of 1942. Son of John L. Baxter, Sr., John Baxter, Jr., Phi Beta Kappa. After serving second lieutenant in the U.S. Army in World War II, worked in the family canning business until 1967, after which he was in the food processing business in Oregon and Hawaii. While in Maine, Baxter served as state representative from 1959 to 62, being House Majority Leader from 1960 to 62. As such, he played a key role in the acceptance of Governor Baxter's final gift of parkland to the state in 1962. His son is John Randolph Baxter, class of 65, and daughters Connie and Judith. Hartley Cone Baxter II, 1926 to 1996, class of 1948. A son of John L. Baxter, Jr., Hartley Baxter graduated in 1948 and began a distinguished advertising career which spanned from 1949 to 1986. His notable campaigns included Red Rose Tea, State of Maine Tourism, and Shaw's Supermarkets. His son Eric Stoddard Baxter graduated in the class of 1975. Hartley C. Baxter's two grandsons, through daughter Ellen Baxter Morrill, attended Bowdoin. Robert Lincoln Morrill, class of 47, and Richard Allen Morrill, class of 50. Smith Union was created during the 1995 renovation of the High Gymnasium. A plaque in the spacious ground floor lounge reads, The Morrill Lounge. This lounge, named in honor of Allen E. Morrill, class of 22, and Ellen Baxter Morrill through the gift of their sons, Robert and Richard, who helped to make possible the construction of this union. And they're here tonight as well. Great. Finally, uh, Rupert H. Baxter's third, three grandsons, through daughter Mary Baxter White, attended the college. Bruce U. Miller White, 1925 to 2007, class of 1950. Rupert Baxter White, class of 55. And Dr. Houghton White, class of 58. 
And so an extraordinary record and an extraordinary contribution to this wonderful college. Thank you.